from Montana's News Leader, this is the MTN 530 News. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Russ Riesinger. Yesterday, Governor Bullock identified Bighorn County as one of nine COVID hotspots where additional measures may have to be taken. Well, three people have now died there in the last 24 hours alone, bringing the county's total deaths to eight now. A man in his 60s died this morning. Well, just this afternoon, a woman in her 70s passed away. Those two deaths are on top of last night's that we already reported when a man in his 60s died after being hospitalized. Bighorn County is currently approaching 200 active cases with seven people hospitalized. Well, the state of Montana reports an additional 138 confirmed cases of COVID-19 today. 34 of those cases come from here in Yellowstone County. There are now more than 3,800 positive cases of COVID in Montana. 57 people have died. 69 people remain hospitalized. And there have been more than 2,300 Montana residents who have now recovered from the virus. Well, an outbreak in Big Sky responsible for some of the high numbers lately as more than 100 construction workers tested positive at the Montage Big Sky Luxury Resort during this past month. The contractor for the project, Suffolk Construction, spoke with MTN and said the virus has spread through asymptomatic workers who didn't have a fever or show any sign of being positive. The company credits surveillance testing for identifying the positive cases and says they will continue to do other testing to prevent the virus from infecting more workers. We originally did surveillance testing just to ensure that everybody, um, everybody on the job site didn't have COVID. And then we are continuing to do what we call smart testing. And smart testing is testing of uh, a random select of 30% of the population on a weekly basis up here on the job site. Suffolk says they have done 885 tests in total on that job site. Well, the coronavirus has also presented a challenge as the new school year gets underway. School staffs have been doing extra work to open under state and county COVID-19 guidelines. QT's David J has more on the preparations at Billings Christian School. Billings Christian is ready for the start of school. We're sitting in the office and we watch a student walk by that's going out to the soccer field and we just are thrilled that we can see a student. So yeah, when they start coming back, it's a really a neat feeling. Head of school Diane Floss says about 95% of the 270 students enrolled will be on campus. Not everything is in place yet, but the staff is prepared for the school year under COVID-19 guidelines. Spaced out the desks so that kids are not just in groups like we typically do. We made sure our chairs were plastic so they can get cleaned easily in the evenings. The toys we have for our preschool are cleanable and we have a plan for doing that. How can we physically separate kids out with and meet the requirements of the county health board? Ordering furniture, some of it will not get here until October. <laughs> so we've had to we've had to uh, go to plan B, plan C, plan D. As students return to Billings Christian School, they're trying to make it as normal as possible, including bringing back sports. Soccer's great. It's outside. Volleyball, we just received our guidelines from the Montana State Christian Athletic Association. It's going to be a week in and week out process. Dan Hansen is a teacher, parent and athletic director. If we're able to play other teams and we're able to keep with our normal schedules there, it'll be great. It's going to be different with people in the stands. We're still trying to figure out how that's going to work, but the goal is that every parent's there able to watch their kid play too. Hansen says the guidelines will affect how he teaches in the classroom and on video. Now we're talking about having to talk to somebody directly through a screen. And you have somehow have to get the information that they can get excited about without being right there with them. And even if you are with them, you're so far away that, that you know, distance does make a difference when you're a teacher. Some of the teachers are also parents. My son will be in seventh grade, and last year during the virtual learning, he said, I'm so ready to go back to school. And I was like, really? He goes, you know it's bad. You know you miss school when you even miss your teachers. <laughs> so, so I, and the feeling's mutual. All the teachers, we all really miss our students. Parents, the number one thing is our teachers. That is equal to being a Christ-centered school. It's been too long since we've had a full school of kids here, and so we're grateful that they can come back now. We think we have a good plan, and we will adjust if we need to going forward. In Billings, David J, MTN News. All right, thanks, David. And Diane Floth says plans could change before and during the school year. The first day of school at Billings Christian is August 20th. Well, remote, uh, remote learning is an option for School District 2 this year. Superintendent Greg Upham said today at a press briefing that the School District website will be the place for parents to sign up. 
District surveys show about 30% of students are interested in remote learning. That translates to about 5,000 students and 200 faculty that will be involved. Upham believes the best way for teachers and students to connect and learn in the classroom, or is in the classroom, but many face real issues of health concerns. Several issues remain to be resolved before school starts on August 24th. The availability of substitute teachers, transportation issues, and the unknown of the virus in general. By Monday, the school district will have a list of questions and answers on its website. You can find the back to school plan right now on our website, ktvq.com. A new busing policy for School District 2 has been announced. Students who ride the bus to school will be assigned a seat and are required to sit there daily. School drivers are instructed to seat one student per bench if possible. If not, siblings will be the first to be seated side by side. All students and drivers will be required to wear masks on the bus. First student is charged with keeping the vehicles sanitized. Parents are asked to keep children home if they display any symptoms. Well, no foul play is suspected in the death of a Billings man who was found in the Yellowstone River last week. 54-year-old Troy Gardner's body was recovered from the river on July 22nd. An autopsy was performed and found no obvious signs of trauma, according to Yellowstone County Sheriff Mike Linder. Linder says lab results are still pending, so the cause of death is still not known. Investigators used fingerprints to help identify Gardner. Energy consumption in the United States hit a 30-year low back in April. According to the Energy Information Administration, the historic downturn is the result of a drastic reduction in energy demand, all because of the coronavirus pandemic. Well, case in point, the nearby oil patch of the Williston Basin, where July has been a month to reckon with. MTN's Jay Cohn has more. Ron Ness heads the North Dakota Petroleum Council. The trade association represents more than 650 companies doing business in the Bakken, from oil service companies to pipelines to producers. This is the place to find out what's really happening. Productivity in the Bakken had gotten to the point where I think it was one of the best places to put your dollar, if not the best place in the country. All of that, though, changed this past winter when amidst an international oil price war, the coronavirus pandemic slammed the brakes on the world's economy. Suddenly, oil production outpaced its demand. That devastating April 15th day, which historically used to be tax day, now I think we'll remember it as the day that oil went negative, a negative $37 on April 15th. Earlier this month, the state of North Dakota reported a 30% drop in its oil production. Industry listened to what the market told it on April 15th. and It was like, stop producing oil. There's no place for this oil to go. As for what's coming next, Ness admits after what we've seen so far in 2020, he has no idea. But with oil now hovering around $40 a barrel, the Bakken sweet spot is within reach. It means to me that in a no COVID world, we would have oil prices back in that, in that $55 plus range, which is really the price that I think it's going to take to, uh, to move some money back into the Bakken. We need about $20 million a day of capital investment to mm -hmm. run full throttle Bakken. Just, just wow. think about that. $20 million a day to capitalize 55 drilling rigs, 25 completion crews, 55,000 employees across the Bakken. And that, you know, that goes well into Billings, into Sydney, into Glendive, into Baker, uh, Glasgow, all the way across Montana. This is not just a, the, the, the Williston Basin encompasses multi-states. As you can see, the pull of the Bakken is huge. As goes the Bakken, so goes our local economy. But what separates this downturn from previous ones is the pandemic and the cloud it has cast over world energy demand. In Billings, I'm Jay Cohn reporting for MTN News. All right, thank you, Jay. As part of its Bakken Restart program, North Dakota is using more than 30 million of its CARES Act dollars to help plug and reclaim more than 400 oil wells that were orphaned during this pandemic. The program is designed to help retain as many oil sector jobs as possible. Wyoming businesses and nonprofits will soon be seeing some financial relief from the pandemic. Starting Tuesday, August 4th, $225 million in relief will be available there in Wyoming. Applications are to be done online. Governor Mark Gordon says that this funding is a much needed lifeline to businesses that have been hurt by COVID-19. If you have a business in Wyoming and would like the link to this relief website, you can log on to our website. KTVQ.com. Well, campfires will be banned at all fish, wildlife, and parks properties in Stillwater County starting today. 
The restrictions are in response to dry, warm weather that could increase the danger of human-caused wildfires. Stillwater County Commissioners already announced Tuesday that they'd enter Stage 1 fire restrictions countywide, and FWP followed that lead. Stage 1 restrictions ban campfires except where specifically designated. Up next on tonight's Q2 530 News, fact-checking the political ads in the 2020 vote. We continue our series on Ad Watch. Tonight we're examining two ads attacking Republican gubernatorial candidate Greg Gianforte. And in sports, the Bobcats lose another football opponent, but Scott shows us why that actually brings some encouraging news for this football season. And coming up in weather, we've got some spotty showers around the Billings area today and the process of moving out. So what comes next? We'll have the answer coming up.